I am Pastor Joey Miller from Champion Christian Center, and I want to invite you to join us for episode five of Matters of the Mind. Grab your notebook, grab a pen, and we're going to get into God's Word today and talk about overcoming shame. Hi, I'm Pastor Joey Miller from Champion Christian Center, and I want to welcome you to Episode 5 of L Ministries Matters of the Mind. Grab your pen and grab your notebook. We're going to get into God's Word today as we talk about Part 2 of Self-Image. We're going to talk about overcoming shame. Overcoming shame. What is shame? Shame is defined as the, the pain of feeling humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior, a loss of respect or esteem. Shame produces unworthiness, incapableness, and a feeling that you are just completely unloved. And so we see here that shame doesn't produce anything that's in alignment with what God's Word says about us. And a lot of us are still carrying the residue of shame in our lives in a daily basis. And I want to talk to you today about overcoming that shame, reprogramming your mind so that you walk a life overcoming in every area, that there is no trace of any part of your old nature or your old self behind you. You know, shame uh, is, is not only defined as that sense of being incapable and unloved, but it's measuring yourself against others that are around you and leaving yourself feeling that you're incapable in the sense of that you're never going to measure up to the standards that are set about us. Shame can affect us uh, from something that happened in the past and can still kind of linger over our lives. Or shame could just be boundaries that we've put on ourselves to say, that you know what, I'm never going to reach or achieve this level in my life. Last week we talked about self-image and how dangerous it is uh, to look at ourselves in an improper perspective in comparison to how God has created us. You know, God has created you with a wonderful specific purpose. We talked about that last week in Jeremiah, that before he even knew you, before you were even born, he knew you and he had a purpose and a plan for your life. So the problem is that we live in a day and an age in a society where there's always standards popping up all around us, whether we know it or not, when we glam, glim, get a, catch a glimpse of a magazine or a TV show or social media, all of a sudden, all of these standards are set in our minds of, of, of these definitions of how we should be, how should we act, how we should be as a mother. Are we hanging out with our friends enough? You know, what are all these standards? Am I the perfect wife? These, that, that couple on social media looks so happy all the time, you know, and, and I feel like my husband and I don't connect like that. And all of a sudden, this inadequacy that we're feeling from these projections that are in our life are creating a shadow of shame over us where we're always feeling like failure. We're feeling like we're failing ourselves. We're feeling like we're failing others constantly. And that's not a good place to be. That's not a good place to meditate. Because as we talked about last week in the last episode, how we see ourselves is directly connected to how we will act in our life. That our actions will go hand in hand with that image, that portrait of how we see ourselves being. And I want to talk to you today about overcoming that image that you're always failing, that you're not good enough. And so that's, that's the aspect of shame. There's many aspects that we could talk about today, but that's what I really want to focus on. I want to talk about coming against that image that you're always failing. You know, we live in, in a society where there's standards that are set that are almost completely unattainable to achieve. Now, I completely believe that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength, that there's not one area in your life. You could be like the Proverbs 31 woman, and you could be, uh, you could be excelling in several different areas, and that's God's will for you is to excel. But let me tell you this. If you try to do it in your own strength, you will fail miserably. So God calls us to a place where he says, let me put grace upon your life to empower you to be everything that you are called to be. Now, notice I said you, you are called to be. That doesn't mean that he's going to give you the grace and the empowerment to be uh, something that you're not called to be. He's not going to give you the grace and the empowerment to do something that you wish you were called to do. He's going to give you the grace and the empowerment to walk in the giftings and the callings. That means to be the best mother that you were called to be, to be the best wife that you 
you were called to be. Now, God's standard in his word, that's the baseline. There's a certain standards that he has called us to through his word that is our starting point. But let me tell you this. If you spend your whole life striving and, and aspiring to be somebody else, you're missing out on the beautiful plan that God has for you, number one. And number two, you're always going to leave yourself in a place that you feel like you're failing. That's not a good place to be. So we're going to renew ourselves with the word of God today. Did you know that God's word says this in Psalm 3, 2? It says, so many are saying God will never rescue him, but you, O Lord, are a shield around me. You are my glory and the one who holds my head high. God's thoughts are towards you aren't that you're failing all the time. Those are your thoughts towards yourselves. God's thoughts towards you are that when we lift our eyes on and we set our eyes on him, he's the lifter of our head. That means the areas that we want to feel shame, that we feel uh, insignificant, that we feel like we're failing. God is the lifter of our head. He lifts us up and gives us confidence and says, no, daughter, I have called you to greatness. I have called you to something spectacular. Keep your eyes on me and I'll lead you and guide you and give you the grace and the empowerment to fill that call, call out. Isaiah 57 says this, The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I shall not be put to shame. The key there is setting your eyes on Jesus Christ, keeping your eyes like flint uh, on the one, the, the one who has called you, the perfecter, the author and perfecter of your faith. When you set your eyes on him, everything else is redefined. That you understand that, you know what, who you are is, is good. That you start to be true to yourself. The best person that you could be true to is the person that God has created you to be. Be true to that girl. I said it before and I'll say it again. Get a glimpse of who that girl is and be true to her. Be that girl. And we do that by, by being consistently true to the image of ourselves that we know is recreated in God's word. Not, not a, a definition that we've put upon ourselves, not standards that we have set for ourselves that we're continually falling short of, but standards that we are defined through God's word. That means this. You you might be a working mom. You might be a stay-at-home mom. And you know what? Whatever God's called you to, that's okay. He's given you the grace and the empowerment to carry that out. That he's put you in a place that you are the best mother for your child, the one that he has given you. And if you're serving the Lord, if you're seeking the Lord, he's not going to let you mess that up. He's going to give you the grace and the empowerment to do it. So don't continue to try to fit yourself in a mold that wasn't created for you and, and then being frustrated with yourself because you don't fit in it. And then saying, you know what, I, I'm, I'm not good enough because I don't fit into this mold. That's not the mold that God has created for you to walk in. So keep your eyes fixed on him. Know that he has called you. He has set you apart. Nothing in your life is an accident. And when you're seeking him, he will lift up your eyes. He will lift up your head and you'll walk with fresh confidence and being the woman that God has called you to be. Did you know that Psalm 34, 5 says, those who looked at him are radiant and their faces shall never be ashamed. Then when you keep your eyes upon the Lord and it says their faces were radiant as they gazed upon him and that radiance took away all of the shame, all of the misconceptions, all of the false realities that we define ourselves as and all of a sudden we see ourselves in the reflection of the God who made us and created us. So today be be empowered, be encouraged that, that the things that you're doing uh, you know, don't always feel like you're setting bars that you're not going to be able to hit. Set standards for your life life that are out of God's word. Get alone with him. Get that definition of who he's called you to be and what standards he set for your life and then walk in those. Let, let Not be ashamed. Don't let other people define you and put you in a mold that's not what he's called you to be. But say, God, in your image, the, in your image, you've created me perfectly. You have a perfect plan. That which you've called me to, you've graced me for. And as I walk in your grace, there's no failure. There's no shame that I can carry. If you mess up as your mom, if you mess up as a wife, you ask him for strength and forgiveness, and you keep on walking with your head up high, knowing that he loves you, that he has called you, that he is on your side, that he calls you lovely today. Renew your mind with the good things that he has about you. Zephaniah says that he sings over you. He's not ashamed of you. He's proud of you. So today, walk in boldness and confidence. Don't let anything else define you and be the woman of God that God has called you to be. Overcome shame every time through getting a glimpse of the girl he created you to be and being that woman. Love you so much. God bless you. And we'll see you next week for Matters of the Mind. 
Thanks so much for joining us for episode five of Matters of the Mind. We hope that you are enjoying this series and pray that God's word is changing you and transforming you as you meditate on it daily. And make sure you follow us not only on Instagram, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Follow me personally at Joey Miller, and we will see you next week.